So this whole class is about trying to help you all become happier. But there is this interesting question about whether or not that should be the goal we're putting time and effort into, right? Because there's opportunity cost. You can put time and effort only into a certain number of things. Should we be really focused on this, this idea of becoming happier, right? And one of the objections I sometimes get from my students when I talk about the fact that I teach a whole class about being happier is they say, well, like, isn't that totally selfish? Like, you know, maybe you're going to make you know, one person happier, but that means like, you know, everybody around them is not going to be happy. Or maybe you're going to make that person happier, but then that person will become more selfish. They'll just be complacent and like, not do anything to help others. Like, is this even a good goal kind of morally to get people to feel happier? And here's a spot where I think the science gives us a really clear answer, which is that the evidence suggests that people who self-report being happier, they're not selfish. If anything, there's lots of evidence that feeling happier can actually make you a little bit more pro-social. It can make you nicer to other people. And this is a phenomenon that researchers call the feel-good, do-good phenomenon, which you can probably guess what this phenomenon is. It's just a phenomenon in which when people are in a good mood, they tend to help other people, which you can kind of guess this and you can kind of see it in your own life. Like when you're in a super good mood, you're gonna like hold the door open for somebody, you're gonna give other people compliments just because you feel good. But it turns out experimentally that this is a big predictor of people's pro-social behavior, just the kind of mood that you put them in. Right? So one study that looked at this by North and colleagues did this in a funny way. They tested students at a college who were just at a gym. And what they varied was the kind of music that was on. They were either playing very happy music, you know, Pharrell's like, cause I'm happy, or they were playing like really depressy kind of emo, like, you know the stuff, right? And they, what happened was they asked these students whether or not they'd be willing to help out an experimenter afterwards. This experimenter says, hey, you know, I have this class. I have to distribute these leaflets. Like, I'm really desperate for some help. Would you spend like 15 minutes helping me distribute these leaflets afterwards? And what they find is that when the happier music is on, more students stick around to distribute the leaflets. More students are around to actually help. And this is not, this is just one example I'm showing you because we don't have that much time to go through these, but there are countless examples of these. If you have people list their happy memories, they're more likely to say yes to donating blood. And from a very early study in the 1970s, if you play people happy, happy kind of information, happy news over the radio, they're more likely to help a person find a lost contact. I guess in the 70s, people would like lose their contacts all the time. It's like, I need help finding my contact or something. But basically, the point is that when we're happier, we just do nicer stuff. And so in some sense, it's not selfish to feel happier, right? We like wind up doing nicer things for other people. But there's a different worry you could have about happiness. Not that it makes us selfish towards the other people around us, but maybe it makes us complacent. Maybe it makes us kind of not worry about the big picture of the stuff that's going on. And this is a particularly big worry, right? Because there's this idea, you know, kind of like the this is fine meme, right? That like if, if we're just kind of happy and enjoying it, every the world could be on fire around us and we would completely ignore it. And the sad thing for your generation is that like kind of the world is on fire for your generation. Like the world's like literally on fire in terms of climate change, but it's also on fire in terms of social justice, right? Like we need to deal with racial injustice. We need to deal with racial violence. We need to fight all the bad things that are going on right now, right? And for better or for worse, this is gonna take some emotion. It's gonna take some anger and some energy. It's gonna take people who are upset about things to actually get something done. And so the worry is if we make people kind of happy, you know, this sort of SpongeBob toxic positivity way, then maybe people will just ignore it. They'll just be happy with their own life and not take action to fight when it's needed. Like, is this what happens? Well, this is something that researchers really worry about because it would be bad to make everybody happy if that meant that the world didn't get fixed. And it turns out that this is another spot where our conception is just wrong. It turns out happy people are more actively trying to fix the world. How do we know this? Well, we know this from some studies by Kushlev and colleagues that looked at this in some different contexts. Um, they went out to, to the University of Virginia right after a bunch of kind of white supremacist protests and looked at people's reactions to this. They gave these UVA students first a test of their positive affect. So they're testing whether or not these students are happy. And then they're saying, hey, you know, this, this awful incident just happened around your campus. Did you do anything about it? Did you go to a protest? Did you donate money? Did you take some action to kind of fight this? And what they find is that positive affect, like the how happy you're feeling, seems to be positively correlated with actually taking some action, which kind of fits, right? Like if you're feeling depressed and anxious, you might not have the bandwidth to go to a protest and fight things. But if you're in a good mood, you're going to get upset about what's going on, and you're really going to take some action. Kushlev has found the same kind of thing when he looks at other sort of things that we need to be worried about, things like climate change and so on. He actually did this in a big sample of people. So he went out and measured happiness in over 2,000 people. And then he looked at people's attitudes towards climate change. Are you worried about climate change? Are you anxious about it? But then also people's actions. 
And then here's what he found. Again, we're going to nerd out, and I'm going to show you this graph. I'm going to plot people's attitudes towards climate, like basically how anxious are you. And what he finds is that the not so happy people are pretty anxious about climate change, which kind of tracks, right? Like if you're, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, you might be anxious about climate change too. So from this, you might be like, aha, this is the complacency thing we were worried about. But he also looked at people's action. Do you go to a protest? Did you donate money? What did you do to do it? What did you do to deal with this? And what he finds is that the people who are the happiest are the ones that are taking the action. Again, it tracks, right? Like you have more bandwidth to kind of deal with it. And so all this goes to say that happiness isn't selfish. It's correlated with doing nice stuff for other people. It's correlated with taking action. And it's one way that we can think about solving these social injustice problems of the world is maybe we need to focus on people's mental health first, and that will allow them to sort of take the action they need to solve some of these things.